G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so the market's kind of, I reckon it's in a bit of a sort of holding pattern at the moment. Some altcoins are still doing fairly well, uh, others are kind of just ranging, you know, fluctuating up and down. Bitcoin's definitely doing that, kind of sitting down around the low sort of, you know, $30,000 mark. And look, Ethereum just hasn't been able to break that old all-time high, at least on a close. It, it did wick above it. Uh, but then has come back down. So let's have a look. BTC dominance continues to drop and Ethereum uh, dominance continues uh, to rise. So altcoins are generally doing pretty well at the moment. Uh, gas prices are still way too high. I mean, at least it's not the 200 that it was at uh, yesterday, but 99 is still expensive. It makes uh, any kind of transaction with ETH quite expensive. All right, let's have a look though. What's moving? Well, uh, market cap still under a trillion uh, and that's kind of an issue we want to get above a trillion and stay above a trillion but I really do think uh, cryptocurrencies uh, they're just not in the news as much right now you know Bitcoin's not pumping super high uh, and that's really the thing that will bring in you know retail and all the rest of it and we need retail here and there is some retail don't get me wrong but I just don't think it's exciting enough uh, for them unless they're in some decent alts at the moment but let's have a look. What's really pumped? All right, Horizon seems to be doing well. Elrond's done pretty well. Decred. So we've had some things that have pumped, but there's nothing really too crazy here right now. Not compared to what we had over the last, you know, sort of probably week or two. These are pretty, you know, average sort of moves. I mean, engine 6%, 24 hours is, you know, average. But, you know, 87% uh, over the seven days was pretty good. But look, before we had uh, much bigger ones than this. So I think things are tapering off at the moment. And I think a big move is getting ready to come. And I think it's going to come from Bitcoin, to be honest. But we'll just have to wait and see. What about big losses? No big losses, really. Uh, you know, a couple of double-digit ones here. But, you know, nothing too bad. Uh, and particularly in these, look, over the last seven days, they did pretty well. So these are pretty stock standard retracements that uh, you would expect. Uh, Synthetics Network, uh, it's really just been ranging around the 15 to $13 uh, dollar, uh, mark for a while. I do think Synthetics uh, is getting ready for another uh, big leg up at some stage. I'm just not sure when it's going to come. I really do think that Bitcoin uh, is getting ready to move. So again, losses, nothing kind of too bad. Now, here's why I think Bitcoin's getting ready to make a move. Look what Bitcoin is currently doing at the moment. This is really just very quiet. This is hardly doing anything. You know, we've had this, it's, you know, coiling tighter and tighter. Now, don't get me wrong, it could drop off and definitely come down. Uh, but I just think it is getting ready to make a move. Could be to the downside though. We've always got to keep that in mind. I don't think so though. I think Bitcoin uh, is basically just gearing up to start moving up and this uh, will be good for the market. But we'll have to wait and see. But what I'm going to do is get rid of this. Oh, I'll just leave this line here for now. Now we've obviously broken outside of this so we can get rid of this. We no longer need this. Okay, and we can get rid of this because this is really sort of uh, not something we need to look at at the moment. We are in a kind of downtrend though, but it really does seem to be kind of leveling out. This is really, again, around this kind of $32,000 mark is the average price. Uh, and we can have a look here. Uh, and this is late in the day already. So, I mean, you look at this. This is uh, 10 o'clock at night uh, UTC time. Uh, and the entire day, the candle has done hardly anything. We've had two days where there's been hardly anything happening uh, in Bitcoin whatsoever. So that makes me think that something big is going to happen. Again, I don't want to, you know, not putting FUD out there. It could be to the downside. We could, you know, for whatever reason, drip, uh, drop down to here. But I'm thinking it's more going to be to the upside, uh, in all fairness. Uh, but we will have to wait and see. Uh, you know, it's Tuesday morning here in Australia. So it's kind of, you know, Monday night, uh, Monday morning uh, over in the States. 
and we'll see what's going to happen with Bitcoin. Quickly, I just want to have a look at Ethereum as well. So in the dollar chart, we can see we got, you know, we did break the old all-time high, but it was just a wick, uh, and we've closed down low again. So we're really, I think Ethereum's going to take a little while to get over this $1,400 mark. I don't think it's going to happen uh, too quickly. Well, we already see it hasn't, you know. This was uh, back on the 10th of January, so, you know, two weeks ago, uh, we got up around close, dropped off. You know, again, we got up close, dropped off, got up close, and we've dropped off again. I think this is possibly going to last for a little bit longer. We'll just have to wait and see. But what's pleasing uh, is how Ethereum has been playing out against Bitcoin. We can see back since uh, early January, uh, Ethereum has really been outpacing Bitcoin. But again, it got up to its old sort of all-time high in the dollar value, and there was a quick sell-off. So that's just people taking profits at the moment. Uh, and likely taking profits from Ethereum uh, and putting them into altcoins. Uh, very interesting times. We'll have to wait and see. Again, my sneaky suspicion is that I think Bitcoin's getting ready to make another move. And there's reasons why. So uh, here, Marathon invests $150 million into Bitcoin. So their stock, they're a uh, Bitcoin mining operation. Uh, their stock price uh, rose. Uh, a little bit and they decided to buy 155 million dollars worth of Bitcoin actual Bitcoin uh, 150 million dollars worth of Bitcoin and then their stock price rose <laughs> even more when the news came out so uh, that's always good now we can go over here so big universities allegedly this you know they haven't said they have yet but you know, the source says that they have. So Harvard, Yale, Brown endowments have been buying Bitcoin for at least a year. So some of the largest university endowment funds in the US have been quietly buying uh, cryptocurrencies for the past year or so through accounts held at Coinbase and other exchanges Coindesk has loaned. According to two sources familiar with the situation, Harvard, Yale, Brown and the University of Michigan, as well as several other colleges, have been buying crypto directly on exchanges. Several Ivy League uh, endowments took an interest in blockchain technology via crypto-focused venture capital funds back in 2018. So they, pr they uh, probably got in you know, near the bottom uh, and then kind of tracked it up in the 2019, uh, watched it, you know, sort of come down a little bit and, you know, had that market crash uh, with uh, the pandemic in 2020 and then are starting to see the upside again. So this is what me, this is what makes me think that, again, Bitcoin, uh, it's just coiling up at the moment and looking for a, another move uh, up. But here, we have some old Bitcoin uh, rewards, so some Bitcoin that was mined way back in 2010 uh, that is starting to be sold off. So the prices are high. People who've had that Bitcoin for a long time are sort of happy to sell. So we can see here on Monday, 25th of January, so that was uh, yesterday here in Australia. Uh, that'll be today for some places around the world. At roughly 2 a.m., the notorious old school miner from 2010 has spent another consecutive... Uh, 21 decade old uh, blockchain rewards with a thousand and five bitcoins sold off this is possibly the same mining entity our news desk has been tracking for months the bitcoin from 2010 move today uh, follows the exact same pattern as all the block uh, block reward strings as our team has caught up waking us uh, has caught waking up during the last 10 months now look not all of these were sold some of them were just moved and put into a wallet and things like that but some of these really you know decade old bitcoin uh, block rewards are currently being sold and moved so from the satoshi era whether they're from satoshi's wallet or not and whether satoshi him her or they are still alive is still the question that uh, you know, hopefully stays unanswered for at least a long time until uh, Bitcoin is, you know, fully diverse around the world, you know, and big major companies and all the rest of it. And there's little to no worry about, you know, someone being prosecuted and come after because it turns out they or them or he, her, whatever it was, uh, was Satoshi. But very interesting that those Bitcoins are, you know, are being sold uh, and moved uh, in this time. Now, Tron, uh, I don't have any Tron. Uh, I did buy Tron in the last uh, bull run and didn't do too bad. Uh, again, I didn't have much money in the last bull run at all. But, you know, it moved. Uh, a lot of, you know, 
people that don't really like Tron out there, but there's a lot of people that do like Tron. But this is very interesting. So USDT transaction on Tron surpassed Ethereum Tether transactions every day in 2021. I mean, we're only just over three weeks into uh, 2021. So, you know, we can't, you know, take too much uh, from that. But it is interesting. I, you know, a lot of USDT gets moved around on Ethereum and it's just too expensive. Again, we go back over here, look at the uh, gas prices, you know, 99 uh, guay to move on Ethereum. So this doesn't surprise me at all. Tron has a lot lower gas fees. Uh, and, you know, that is one use case for it. The Chinese like Tron though. Uh, they're not a, they're not a, a, well, some of them aren't opposed to it, I guess I should say. Uh, uh, and look, this is one use case that it has. So it says here, during the last two months, Tether transactions have spiked considerably. They uh, most certainly have. Uh, more recently, however, USDT transactions on the Tron network have outpaced the number of Tether transactions on the Ethereum blockchain. Despite a whole lot more ERC-20 based Tethers in the wild, the minted stablecoin using the TRC-20 standard has been a much larger transaction count uh, all year long. They have much lower fees uh, on Tron than Ethereum at the moment, but look, they aren't being used uh, as much as Ethereum. Uh, and really, uh, Tron, uh, if you believe you know what is out there, uh, is just a complete copy uh, of the Ethereum blockchain. They pretty much, uh, I won't say stole it, adopted it might be a better word, uh, and really didn't change too much at all. So, I mean, that'd be part of the reason why their uh, fees are lower though, is because they're not used as much as Ethereum, even though they almost did uh, completely copy the Ethereum blockchain. Uh, again, if you believe, you know, the information that's out there. All right, Litecoin, it's about to turn 10 years old. So 2021, uh, it turns, so that's this year, uh, it turns 10 years old. Uh, and here's some things that maybe some people didn't know about uh, Litecoin, uh, and I'm a fan of Litecoin. Uh, look, we'll start with the one that people don't like the most. So we'll go right down the bottom. But this is kind of why uh, I still like Litecoin because it did survive. So Charlie Lee, he invented uh, Litecoin. Now he cashed out late in 2017, right near the peak of all his Litecoin. He didn't like just have free Litecoin when he invented the coin though. He had to mine it. He didn't just invent the coin and say, right now I'm giving half to myself. He had to go ahead and mine it. It really is uh, very similar to uh, Bitcoin in many ways, but not completely the same. But look, he cashed out in 2017 uh, from the ones he had mined, not cashed out, you know, like 50% of all the Litecoin ever out there. It's still being mined just like uh, Bitcoin is. Uh, but it survived. It didn't die. Uh, it's still around there. So this is the one that most people don't like. But the fact that it has survived without him, I actually see as a good thing. But let's go have a look at some of the reasons uh, why Litecoin uh, is still a pretty good project, in my opinion, not financial advice. So Litecoin has had zero downtime. So it's never crashed once. Uh, Bitcoin has had uh, one or two issues uh, in its, uh, you know, 12 years sort of history now or going on to sort of 13 13 years because it started in 2008 2009 uh, ethereum has had some issues along the way litecoin has had zero downtime uh, not once has it uh, had any downtime since it launched uh, in october of 2011. it's been in the top 10 ranking crypto ever since uh, it was invented so uh, i thought it was possibly outside the top 10. It was definitely getting close to outside the top 10 at some stage, but look, uh, so for its entire inception, uh, it's been in the top 10, so that's pretty good. Uh, it has stood the test of time uh, and has remained in the top 10. I think it may have trouble staying in the top 10 with uh, DeFi stuff that's coming, but look, it is, uh, it has a, what's the word, a bridge to Cardano uh, coming through and Cardano is looking to get a whole lot of DeFi uh, on it. So that may be uh, a good thing that helps uh, Litecoin stay in the top 10. But I think a number of DeFi projects are gonna be in the top 10 and a lot of things that are in the top 10 are gonna quickly be moved out. Litecoin uh, may be one of those that get moved out, but maybe it doesn't. 
Okay, Litecoin's mining algorithm uh, gives it a security advantage. So uh, Litecoin uses a different mining algorithm to Bitcoin. This means that it can dominate the so-called hash rate of the algorithm, algorithm it uses, which uh, is called script. That's not an option available to Bitcoin Cash. For example, like Bitcoin, it uses SHA-256 uh, algorithm, but only has around 2% dominance, making it vulnerable to attack. He's talking about Bitcoin Cash here. In contrast, Litecoin's script dominance is around 95%. Uh, 99% so it has a much better algorithm Litecoin has high liquidity definitely does uh, it has more ATM support than any other crypto except Bitcoin Bitcoin's the only one that has uh, more ATM support so people are using ATMs in places around the world to buy Bitcoin uh, and the second most uh, purchased Bitcoin from ATMs uh, is Litecoin and I know they're big uh, in parts of Asia supported by PayPal so this is really big I think this is solidified Litecoin and that it won't uh, end up going anywhere uh, PayPal have deemed it as you know decentralized enough and you know things like that uh, and yeah PayPal at the moment is only selling crypto to its US based customers it is allegedly uh, going to sell its crypto worldwide uh, to its worldwide user base and I think that will push up the price of all the cryptos uh, that PayPal has uh, Litecoin being one of them now uh, privacy uh, features coming to Litecoin so that will be good but uh, this is the one I find most interesting almost 2% of Litecoin is locked up in the Grayscale Litecoin Trust so Grayscale are buying Litecoin and they own 2% of all Litecoin I think that uh, bodes well for Litecoin. I'm a fan of Litecoin. It hasn't performed as well as what I'd hoped so far. It's still performed all right. It's well over 100% from uh, when I got into it. Uh, and I think once we see uh, the altcoin season sort of start to expand, that Litecoin will start to do better. Anyway, I'm a fan of Litecoin and, you know, happy birthday to uh, Litecoin in October of this year. I'm sure I'll cover it again in October. Uh, but good to see Litecoin still going uh, and for me, uh, you know, the price of Litecoin uh, has gone up, which is good. But what I also really like is BlockFi. Uh, take Litecoin so you can store your Litecoin there and make some interest on it. And that's exactly uh, what I uh, have done. Now, this is the last story we're going to look at. So, 45 billion DeFi market cap and soaring. So, total value lock suggests that the best is yet to come. So DeFi has, you know, it had a, a kind of, you know, it wasn't a bubble, but it definitely got to a point uh, where it was quite big last year. I think it was around July, uh, June, uh, and then it kind of sold, not, not so much sold off. I mean, it did sell off a bit, I suppose, and then profits went back into Bitcoin and Bitcoin really started to pump. But DeFi has still been growing, you know, continuously throughout that time. It just got a little bit quiet for a while and now it's starting to build again. But what I found really interesting is this down here. Despite these impressive developments, the DeFi sector accounts for just 4.6% of the total cryptocurrency market uh, capitalization, which currently stands at, again, just under a trillion now at the moment. Despite representing just a small sliver of the total uh, crypto market, DeFi's rapid growth suggests, suggests the sector is primed for explosive growth as cryptocurrency becomes more mainstream. I completely agree. We go back to here, we'll refresh this and just see if much has changed. Uh, so it dropped a little bit. All right, there you go. But I think the top 10 will be filled with mostly DeFi coins. Uh, I think Bitcoin will stay. I think Ethereum will stay. Uh, Polkadot will stay, XRP, if they don't get their lawsuit sorted out, I think they're going to push, be pushed uh, outside of that. Cardano will probably uh, struggle, I think Chainlink will stay, Litecoin will struggle, Bitcoin Cash will be pu pushed out, uh, I, I think Binance Coin, again, will still do well, but will be pushed out, uh, and things like Uniswap, Aave, Synthetics Network, uh, with a number of other DeFi products platforms projects whatever you want to call them are going to push their way into the top 10 i don't know if tether will be able to stay there either as well it could do i mean you know all the fud that goes around tether fair enough stable coins are still big business that's why we've got usd coin uh up here as well 
I do think the top 10 will be Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polkadot will probably have its place, uh, and then pretty much anything else other than Chainlink will have a hard time staying in there as DeFi projects like Aave Synthetics, uh, Uniswap, Maker, Compound, and things like that, they're going to push their way into the top 10. All right, love to know what your thoughts are down below. Do you think DeFi is going to make up, I would say, nearly 50% of the top 10 in the near future? Do you think uh, projects like XRP, Cardano, Litecoin, uh, Bitcoin Cash, and Binance Coin will be able to hold their spot within the top 10? Again, we we're talking about Litecoin, and it's been in the top 10 uh, its entire life, lifespan so far. I really do think it's going to have a hard time staying in there once these DeFi projects uh, start to really uh, you know, build momentum. They've done quite well now, but I think they're going to go even more parabolic later on. Love to know your thoughts down below. Stay safe, be kind to one another, hopefully you're on that game train, and I'll see you next time.